Number 10, Mysterious Ship. Nothing is stranger to find in the desert than an ancient shipwreck, but that's exactly what was found in the Nambia Desert just a few years ago. Diamond miners discovered a ship that sank 500 years ago after they drained a man-made lagoon on the coast of Nambia. And while shipwrecks are frequently discovered along this area, which is commonly known as Africa's Skeleton Coast, this ship was special. It was loaded with around $13 million worth of shining gold coins. Some archaeologists are calling this the most significant shipwreck ever found in the country. One of the reasons it was lost for so long is because it was literally underneath the sea floor. According to Fox News, the mining workers had to use bulldozers to create the man-made lagoon by pushing back the sand at the coast to create a sort of seawall. They then had to pump out the seawater from the giant hole they dug. And that was when they found the wreckage. It was literally buried beneath the desert sands. The ship that was found had been built in the 16th century. When archaeologists arrived, they knew something special had been discovered. But it was no easy task to excavate the site. The mining workers had to use two dozers and a fleet of trucks just to keep the lagoon dry for long enough for archaeologists to dig up some treasures. Luckily, they found the treasure chest on day six. The archaeologists literally pulled out a giant chest filled with Spanish and Portuguese gold coins from the sand. Later, the ship was identified as the Bom Jesus, which literally translates to the Good Jesus. It was a Portuguese ship that went missing about 500 years ago while on its way to India. In addition to the mass amount of gold, the ship was also loaded with ivory, 44,000 pounds of copper ingots, and lots of tin. Number 9. Hidden Desert Pool Deep in the desert of San Bernardino County is located an unexpected luxury. Back in 2014, a small and mysterious pool showed up in the middle of the desert. It was apparently created by an artist who purchased a small plot of land and decided to build a luxury pool in the absolute middle of nowhere. But what was really interesting about this strange desert pool was that it was considered a social experiment. The only way to find the pool was to stop by an art center in West Hollywood and pick up the key to access it. When you picked up the key, you were given coordinates that led you deep into the sandy wasteland of the Mojave. You then had to either hike or drive all the way out to where the pool was. It was a long and exciting adventure to reach a shallow pool completely isolated from the rest of the world. But as a social experiment, it was kind of a failure. This random pool in the middle of the desert, located among shrubs, snakes, and lizards, only lasted a handful of months. The first visitors to the pool cared for it and used it properly, but eventually, too many people learned of its location. Within a short period of time, the public had destroyed their own pool, and now all that's left is a sad reminder of how hopeless the public really is, sitting trashed and dirty in the Mojave Desert. Have you ever found a hidden swimming pool? What kind of mischief did you get into there? Was it a drained pool that you used for skateboarding? Or did you use it for a romantic tryst? Tell me about your adventures in the comment below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic for more fun and exciting videos just like this one. Number 8. The Atari Graveyard In New Mexico, near the desert city of Alamogordo, a strange stockpile of ancient video games has been recovered from its burial site. The story behind the games is incredible. It began in 1983 when Atari paid Alamogordo to dump nearly 800,000 video games into its city landfill. But after 83, people mostly forgot about the incident. Nobody could remember where the video games were buried. Then, over 30 years later, when it became clear some of the buried video games could have been worth a lot of money, people decided it was time to start looking for them. After doing quite a bit of digging, the Atari graveyard was eventually found 30 feet under the ground buried inside of the trench. The city of Alamogordo then dug up the games that they had originally buried and sold the treasures for nearly $100,000. According to CNN Business, they sold nearly 900 games, including a single copy of what is still considered to be the worst video game in history. I'm of course talking about E.T. the Extraterrestrial from 1982. 
This one game alone sold for $1,535. Number 7. Ancient Petroglyphs On the windswept Chilean coast at the edge of the Atacama Desert, scientists have discovered fantastic petroglyphs from about 1,500 years ago that depict the slaughter of a variety of sea creatures. These new petroglyphs are showing how ancient hunters used harpoons and rafts to hunt unthinkable marine beasts. According to the petroglyphs, 1,500 years ago in Chile, the native population was hunting sea lions, swordfish, sharks, and even whales. The pictures were painted in iron oxide on the sides of massive boulders, and there were hundreds of scenes found displaying epic battles between whales and humans. This new archaeological evidence is suggesting that the society that lived in the valley between the ocean and the desert may have been one of the first specialized civilizations on Earth to hunt marine animals. They had extremely sophisticated fishing techniques, including intricate fish hooks crafted from shell, bone, and cactus spines. They even used sea lion skin to make their rafts. These incredible depictions were discovered at a new site in El Medano, and it's pretty boggling to imagine a handful of guys in seal skin raft hunting giant whales with spears. And yet, that's exactly what happened back then. For anyone who thinks whale hunting only cropped up in the 19th century, think again. It turns out that humans have been hunting whales ever since we could build boats. Number 6. The Nevada Clown Motel Perhaps the creepiest thing ever discovered in the desert is the Clown Motel of Nevada. It's absolutely horrifying. This hotel is located at the edge of the desert, it's decorated with thousands of freaky clowns, and it's positioned, conveniently, beside an abandoned graveyard. If you're the kind of person who likes creepy things, then there's nothing better than a haunted clown motel complete with a cemetery. And even though this might seem like a place straight out of a Stephen King novel, it's 100% legit. But the clientele at this strange place may surprise you. First, the Clown Motel primarily caters to bikers and truckers. Also, the cemetery holds the remains of local miners who worked in the area decades ago. There is absolutely no connection between the clowns and the graves. They just so happen to be sitting next to each other. Number 5. World War II Plane there is a World War II airplane sitting in the middle of the Sahara Desert. It had remained untouched for the last seven decades before a Polish oil worker stumbled across it completely by accident. The oil worker had been on an expedition in the Egyptian desert where he came upon the aircraft sitting in the sand 200 miles from any town. But the story of how it crashed into the desert is far more fascinating than the story of it being found. While the plane is still in relatively good shape, it's still just an old piece of war machinery lost to the sands of time. But until 1942, the fighter plane had served its purpose. That is, until it crashed into the Sahara Desert and the pilot was lost. According to Business Insider, the pilot was likely only 24 years old at the time. It's also believed that the pilot, likely someone named Sergeant Dennis Copping, survived the initial crash. A parachute discovered on the side of the wreckage appeared to have been used as a shelter from a horrifying desert sun before the sergeant ultimately succumbed to heat and thirst. The pilot had been a member of a fighter unit based in Egypt during World War II. He had been flying the airplane to a British airbase to get it repaired when it crashed. It looks like those repairs will finally get done as the RAF Museum in London is planning to recover and restore the aircraft to put it on display. Number 4. Utah Evaporation Pools The Utah Evaporation Pools are some of the most spectacular things you can find in the entire state. Unfortunately, they are not natural. These pools are special evaporation ponds used in the production of potassium chloride but they look like a natural phenomenon. These pools are located in the middle of an otherwise barren landscape in Utah, and they have captured the world's attention because of their beautiful electric blue color. These pools have created an almost otherworldly landscape, like something you might see on an alien planet. However, you under no circumstance should ever try to swim inside a Utah evaporation pool. That's because you would likely shrivel up from all the salt and dehydrate your body. The sun works to evaporate the water inside of the ponds, 
and after about 300 days, all of the liquid brine turns into salt and crystals of potassium. These pools are basically just stranger versions of mines. Since the potash comes from the basin underneath the ground, and the potassium is dissolved by pumping hot water down through drilled wells and into the mines. The brine is then drawn out to fill up the above ground pools where the water turns a magnificent shade of blue. Number three, organic substances on Mars. Our next discovery does not even come from our own planet. However, you can't deny that Mars is basically one giant desert. And even though Mars is a seemingly barren wasteland, there have been some pretty impressive discoveries made on its surface. For example, in 2018, NASA released an article stating that they found ancient organic material on the face of the red planet. NASA's Curiosity rover, just a few years ago, found evidence preserved in rock on the fourth planet from the sun that suggests Mars supported ancient alien life. This is literally proof of alien life, but for whatever reason, it seems to have been swept under the rug ever since NASA released the information. Either nobody wants to talk about it, or somebody doesn't want you to hear about it. In any case, the findings are real. The rover discovered organic molecules inside of sedimentary rock dated to be about 3 billion years old. The robot also found seasonal variations that seemed to indicate that there had once been real seasons on the red planet. This means that billions of years ago, Mars could have hosted an entire planet of animal and life forms, with winters, summers, and everything in between. This is a fantastic biological discovery on another planet, and it goes to show that even without human intervention and global warming, there is nothing that can stop a planet from turning from a cornucopia of life into a barren wasteland where nothing lives. It's just the cycle of the universe. Number two, mystery monster. A bizarre creature has been spotted on camera strolling through the desert, and people can't decide whether it's a goat or chupacabra. People also can't decide whether it's real or fake. In the video, you can see the mysterious beast for just a few seconds before it disappears behind a bush. And unfortunately, the footage is quite fuzzy. The thing in the video could just be an extremely ugly man walking slowly through the desert. However, it definitely looks more like an alien or some kind of horrifying hairless ape. And even though some people claim the monster could be the chupacabra, it's extremely unlikely, considering the chupacabra only has ever been spotted in Central and South America. Portugal is quite a ways off from there, and unless the chupacabra saved its air miles, it probably didn't make it to Europe. Unfortunately, we still don't know what this monster is. Even though the footage has been shared and discussed by several different news agencies, nobody can identify the beast or even put forth a rational explanation for what was seen in this remote region of the Portuguese desert. Number 1. The Atacama Desert Alien You may have seen the photographs of the tiny alien skeleton discovered in the Chilean desert, nicknamed Ada. Ada's mummified skeleton was found about 15 years ago. Never since, it has been a giant source of controversy. Otta's skeleton is only 6 inches or 15 centimeters tall, and yet the bones have the consistency of a child around 8 years old. The obvious conundrum here is that no 8-year-old child is going to be only 6 inches tall. It doesn't make any sense. And yet, the skeleton is real. According to the report from CNN, Otta's strange skeleton also possesses a long and abnormally angular skull with slanted eye sockets and not enough ribs. This has led people to speculate that the skeleton belongs to an extraterrestrial form of life. But of course, that is not the case. Otta's skeleton has been investigated thoroughly ever since its discovery, with researchers doing a full genetic analysis of the skeleton's DNA. They discovered Otta was definitely human, but that Otta suffered from a disturbing series of mutations. Otta had all kinds of horrible deformities, such as skeletal dysplasia, scoliosis, and other muscular skeletal issues. This caused what would have otherwise been a completely normal human to turn into a tiny preserved alien fossil. Of course, Otta would not have been walking around. The tiny person was likely dead upon birth, and it's likely that the birth could have had dangerous consequences for the mother. But the important takeaway here is that Otta's tiny skeleton is not proof of alien life. It's sad, but it's true. 
Which of these crazy discoveries do you think is the strangest? How do you feel about monsters and aliens being found in the desert? Number 10, Tornado Alley on the move. One of the most infamous and frightening natural occurrences in the United States of America is Tornado Alley. It is the top area in the US for tornadoes. According to a report from USA Today, an average of around 40 people die from tornadoes every year in the nine southeastern states that comprise Tornado Alley. Out of all of these states, Alabama has the highest death toll, with an average every year of about 14. As for just how many deadly tornadoes the U.S. experiences every year, according to the National Severe Storms Laboratory, it's about 1,200. Not all of these storms cause death, but they are definitely worrisome. But get ready to be even more worried. According to a new study investigating the future trends of tornadoes in the United States, it seems that Tornado Alley is on the move. There is a trend happening that shows tornado frequency increasing throughout Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, and even Indiana in the coming years. This could have devastating consequences because the mid-south region of the United States is filled with mobile homes, expanding populations, and they don't have the experience needed to survive an increase in storms. In the coming years, we could see Tornado Alley sweep north and east, destroying everything in its path. Number nine, the everlasting storm. Nature is a terrifying thing, and one of the most frightening and beautiful events in all of nature has to be a lightning storm. And while we've all seen lightning at one point in time or another, You've never seen lightning like the everlasting storm going on in Venezuela. There is a lake in the country where thousands of lightning strikes occur every single hour, roughly 28 times a minute. This happens where the Catatumbo River meets Lake Maracaibo. In this very spot, there are about 260 lightning storms each year, with each storm lasting for around 9 hours. It may not actually be everlasting, but it might as well be. This place is recognized in the Guinness Book of World Records for having the highest concentration of lightning ever, with the most spectacular lightning storms happening around October. But what causes such dramatic storms? And can a person survive a visit to this place? According to the report from the BBC, scientists believe that the conductivity of the air over the lake is because of a vast field of methane below. The theory hasn't been proved, but it is highly probable. As for whether you could survive the devastation of this place, you would be fine as long as you didn't bring a lightning rod with you, and if you were completely coated in rubber. Number 8. Underwater Waterfall There is a small island nation called Mauritius, located in the middle of the Indian Ocean, about 1,200 miles or 1,931 kilometers from the continent of Africa. And while this small island has some mysteries of its own, with a long history of colonization, it has a natural phenomenon that is one of the most dangerous and yet most fascinating in the world. It's also something you've probably never seen before. It's commonly known as an underwater waterfall, and when viewed from above, it appears as though the sea around the island is flowing into itself, or almost like it's falling off the earth. The underwater waterfall is actually a runoff of sand deposits slipping into the ocean. Because of how clear the water is here, you'll be able to see a long way down from the top of the slope, where a rough 12,000 foot or 3,658 meter drop leads from the shelf of the island into a great abyss. And the sand flowing into it makes the abyss appear as though it's an otherworldly waterfall flowing into the great beyond. It's definitely more of an optical illusion than an actual underwater waterfall, but it's still extremely dangerous. The water is more shallow above the abyss, but one wrong move could send you splashing into the danger zone. If you're not a strong swimmer, you may end up flowing with the sand down into a watery grave. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Give this video a like and hit that subscribe button for more videos like these. Number 7. The Death Cap Mushroom The Death Cap Mushroom is the deadliest mushroom in the entire world. 
It has been reported that the death cap mushroom kills and poisons more people each and every year than any other known mushroom on Earth. The scientific name for this mushroom is Amanita phylloides, but death cap honestly makes more sense. This is because those who accidentally eat a death cap mushroom often die. It's not a fast or pleasant death either. Symptoms don't begin for between 6 and 24 hours. Then comes the abdominal cramps, the puking, and the painful diarrhea. At first, someone sickened by death cap mushrooms might just think they have the stomach flu. Because of this, they might not seek treatment. But sure enough, the poison from the mushroom makes itself known eventually. The poison will destroy a person's liver. It binds to the enzyme that is responsible for creating new proteins, and this means that cells won't be able to function. Your liver will quickly fail, and without immediate treatment, your other organs will follow. You'll then slip into a coma and die. It also doesn't take much to kill you. Just a few mouthfuls are enough to do the job. What's even scarier is that according to many people who have been poisoned and survived, the death cap mushroom is extremely delicious and be prepared to be even more frightened. The death cap mushroom originally came to North America from Europe, but is now present on every continent, except of course for Antarctica. Next time you're mushroom picking, you better be extremely careful. Number six, Snake Island. Snakes are some of the most horrifying things found anywhere in nature. Specifically, the venomous pit viper is one of the all-time most fearsome serpents slithering around the world. I don't know what nature was thinking when she decided to create Snake Island, a small piece of land about 93 miles or 150 kilometers from the coast of Brazil, completely filled with venomous vipers. The island is untouched by human hands, without a single building on it. According to Atlas Obscura, there are at least one to five snakes per 10 square feet or three meters. This is literally terrifying, as you basically can't walk more than a few feet without stepping on a unique species of pit viper known as the Golden Lancehead. It's been reported that these snakes are responsible for at least 90% of snake-related fatalities in Brazil. They aren't only wildly dangerous, with venom that acts fast to melt the flesh right off your bone, but they also grow to be about one and a half feet or 0.4 meters in length. The island is crawling with them. But why are they there? That is the big question. The truth is that they like the island because it's a migratory stopping point for seabirds. The snakes evolved to kill the seabirds that land in the trees on the island before they can fly away. This is why their venom acts so quickly. Number five, the manchineel tree. The manchineel tree is the deadliest and most dangerous tree in the world. The tree has horrifying fruit known locally as poison guava. The trees grow naturally throughout the Caribbean and parts of Central and South America, and in Spanish, they are known as Arbol de la Muerta, which translates literally to tree of death. According to the Florida Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences, every single part of this tree is deadly poisonous. It's not only dangerous to eat the fruit, which can burn your throat in a rather unpleasant way and poison you, but it's also dangerous to get anywhere near the tree. Let me tell you why. This tree produces a milky sap, just like any other tree. The only difference is that if you touch it, it will burn your skin. Just placing your hand on the manchineel tree will cause your flesh to erupt with blisters and sores. This thing is not messing around. And even more horrifying is the fact that if you stand under the canopy of the tree while it's raining, the diluted sap will come down in the raindrops and burn your skin as though you were standing under an acid rain cloud. Then there is the burning of the manchineel tree. If for some crazy reason, you decided to use some of this wood in your fireplace, the fumes would cause your eyes to become inflamed and could even blind you. And if you were silly enough to inhale it, you don't even want to imagine what would happen to the inside of your body. Number four, shipworm trees and scary clams. Today, we're looking at the most dangerous things in nature, and a strange invertebrate known as a shipworm is first on the list. The shipworm isn't actually a worm. 
even though it resembles the slimy little creatures. It's a clam, only it has a skinny tube of flesh growing out of its casing that can grow up to two feet or 0.6 meters in length. What makes shipworms so strange is that they burrow deep into wood. This is bizarre for a number of reasons. First off, shipworms have somehow evolved to rely on wood from the land. Swarms of them are often found buried deep into ship holes, broken piers, or even wooden dikes. There have been shipworm infestations all throughout history, from the 1700s when shipworms destroyed over 30 miles or 48 kilometers of dikes in the Netherlands, and even in the 1900s when a shipworm infestation caused billions of dollars in damage in San Francisco Bay by destroying the docks. These worms burrow into the wood and slowly eat it away, potentially putting any wooden thing in the water around them in danger. According to science, shipworms are likely involved in areas thick with mangrove trees. Mangrove trees are some of the only types of trees able to grow in salt water, and it could be that the clams evolved by eating the wood of the mangrove tree, but soon found themselves feasting on ships and other man-made structures. Number 3. The Naruto Whirlpools Most people probably haven't seen a real whirlpool before, and who could blame them? This natural phenomenon is not something that can be viewed from just any beach around the world. They are extremely special forces of nature that can be highly dangerous, and one of the most dangerous and most stunning whirlpools in the world is actually located in Japan. It's known as the Naruto Whirlpool. And no, it has no relation to the famous anime character. It's located in the Naruto Strait and is created by massive volumes of water that shift between the Pacific Ocean and the Inland Sea. With the changing of the tides combined with the strange underwater geography of the strait, the whirlpool is born. And if you were sucked into it, you would surely drown in a maelstrom of horror. The Naruto Whirlpool occurs every six hours with the shifting of the tides. What's really fascinating about this natural danger is that you can actually see it any time you want. It's visible once in the morning and in the afternoon for about two hours. The whirlpool often varies in size depending on how intense the tides are that particular day. On average, you can expect the whirlpool to be roughly 60 feet or 18 meters in diameter. If you were to fall into it, there would be no getting out. Number two, land of the man eaters. The most powerful natural predator on Earth right now is undoubtedly the tiger. It's an apex predator that has evolved through millions of years to become a nearly indestructible force of nature. And depending on where you live in the world, tigers are still things to be feared. Specifically, the Bengal tigers that live in the biggest mangrove forest on Earth, which straddles the border between Bangladesh and India. This area is known as the Sundarbans, and according to the BBC, it is home to about 60 tiger attacks per year, with only about half of the people surviving to tell their story. While we might enjoy looking at tigers from the other side of the glass at our local zoo, the people who live on the northern shore of the Bay of Bengal literally live in fear of their lives every single day, as these tigers stalk hunt and kill fishermen, small children, and women with absolutely no discretion. It's true that there are natural wonders on Earth that are terrifying and dangerous, from lightning storms to rioting volcanoes, but there's just something about a fully grown tiger going on a mad rampage in a small village and tearing people apart with its claws and teeth that is inherently frightening. If you don't want to be eaten by a tiger, I suggest you stay away from the Sundarbans. Number 1. The Volcano Storm There are two very dangerous natural occurrences on our planet. And yes, there are also dangerous trees, animals, and plants. The world can definitely be a scary place. But when you put together a lightning storm and a volcanic eruption, you have the most devastating force of nature ever. This exact thing happened during an eruption in Chile, when the Calbuco volcano erupted and merged with a lightning storm. It just so happened that a photographer named Francisco Negroni had been there at the exact right moment to capture the image of the lightning spiraling around the ash and fire as it was spat from the mouth of the volcano. The photo was titled, The Perfect Fear. If you're wondering how this happened, 
It was actually a combination of different elements. When the internal forces of the volcano collided with the outside world, it was a positive and negative charge colliding, almost like what happens to create a static electric charge. This resulted in a sudden burst of lightning. Just imagine being anywhere near such a violent storm. You would choke on the smoke, be burned by the lava, and electrocuted by the lightning. This is definitely the most frightening expression of nature that has ever happened. Thanks for watching. Which one of these dangerous natural occurrences scare you the most? Number 10, Cassius. One of the largest crocodiles in captivity right now is about 18 feet long or five and a half meters, 2200 pounds or a thousand kilograms, and around 111 years old. That's right, this crocodile is over a century old. His name is Cassius, and if given the chance, he would definitely eat his owner. A man named George Craig, 84 years old, has been feeding Cassius for the last almost 30 years at the sanctuary he owns in Australia. George used to be a crocodile hunter, whom many refer to as the real-life Crocodile Dundee. But what's really amazing about this relationship is that even though the crocodile definitely recognizes George after 30 years together, George has no illusions about how dangerous the animal is. George's grandson recently told Cater's news agency that George is very much aware that if Cassius had the chance, he would lash out and eat George just like a snack. Coincidentally, George actually saved Cassius from hunters in the Northern Territory of Australia in 1987, just one year after Crocodile Dundee came out in theaters. Even with one leg missing and part of his tail gone, the locals were concerned because Cassius was attacking boats. But thankfully, now all he attacks are the snacks that George feeds him every day. Do you know anyone who has a dangerous pet? Let us know in the comments below. And be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Number 9. Fatal Attacks Villagers in the Philippines recently captured one of the largest crocodiles ever recorded. This came after a series of fatal attacks in which a 21-foot or 6.5-meter saltwater crocodile near the Agusan del Sur wetland on the island of Mindanao terrorized local farmers. A three-week hunt followed the disappearance of a farmer who was assumed to have been eaten by this beast of a crocodile. Wildlife authorities actually had to use chicken, dog meat, and even pork to lure the croc out of hiding. The giant crocodile was taken alive, its stomach was examined, but no human remains were found inside. After it was captured, the giant crocodile was transported to a nearby nature park in Bunawan where the locals are hoping to draw in a large tourist crowd. As for its size, it's about three feet longer than Cassius, the previous largest croc captured and held as a pet. Cassius was listed by the Guinness World Records as being the largest saltwater crocodile in captivity, though obviously this one is quite a bit larger. Why are so few crocodiles held captive, especially the larger ones? It's because many of the biggest crocodiles ever are killed in the wild after they become a threat to society. Number 8. Big Croc Down Under The second largest crocodile ever caught in Australia has recently been dragged out of the water by a wrangler named Matt Wright in the Northern Territory. This is a part of Australia that is infamous for having killer crocodiles. This huge monster is estimated to be 18 feet and 3 inches long, or 5 and a half meters. Even though the reports haven't been 100% verified yet, those involved are confident that they've got the second largest croc ever caught in the land down under. And they would know, considering Matt Wright is not only a croc expert, but the star of the National Geographic series Outback Wrangler. He's also a chopper pilot and animal expert. To be honest, this guy sounds like quite an adventurer, and I would love to spend a few days living his lifestyle. The largest crocodile ever caught in Australia is only a few inches longer than this new one, named Dominator. However, Dominator was never officially weighed, making things a bit tricky. Until the pros can get in and do some measuring, we won't know who exactly holds what title. All we know for sure is that Matt Wright caught one seriously large river monster. 
Number seven, Lolong. Lolong used to hold the title of the world's largest crocodile in captivity. Lolong lived in the Philippines and he didn't hold the title for long. After Lolong was captured by angry locals who were sick of him terrorizing their waters, his length was measured to be approximately 20 feet and two inches, or about six meters. He quickly stole the title of biggest croc from Cassius, but then everything went horribly, horribly wrong. When it comes to giving out official titles, Guinness World Records requires that the animals must be living in captivity for somewhere between three and six months. The animal must also be in good health. Lolong survived in captivity in the Philippines for six months, was recorded to be in good health, was measured to be the longest croc in captivity, and was given the title. This happened in late 2011. It was even documented in a special program by National Geographic Wild. But just two years later, on February 10, 2013, Lolong died at the age of 50. Everyone was extremely saddened by the crocodile's death, including the owner of Cassius. Even though the record reverted back to Cassius with Lolong dead, nobody was happy about it. Craig Mead, who was part of the documentary team filming the life of Lolong, told Guinness World Records that Lolong was a superb example of nature at its finest and was an awe-inspiring animal. He will be missed. Number six, giant Florida gator. In Venus, Florida, a giant alligator weighing 800 pounds or 350 kilograms was recently killed after it went on a spree of terror and ate a bunch of local cattle. The gator was actually captured by some farmers working at Outwest Farms Incorporated. According to the local news station, the alligator was harvested while farmers participated in a guided gator hunt on their farm. It turned out to be nearly 15 feet or four and a half meters in length. And one of the farmer's sons even posed with the enormous alligator hanging from the bucket of a John Deere tractor to showcase the victory. This was a behemoth of a reptile, and it had been skulking through the center of Florida, which is an area rich in agriculture, particularly sugarcane and cattle. As you can imagine, the last thing farmers need is a 15-foot gator snacking on all their precious cows. Alligators are technically cousin species to crocodiles, and the difference is in where they live and the shape of their jaws. Florida has alligators and Australia has crocodiles. Number five, the albino crocodile. An albino seawater crocodile named Michael Jackson recently caused havoc in the Adelaide River of Australia when it killed a 57-year-old fishing enthusiast while he tried to pull up his line. This guy had just taken up fishing recreationally near his home in the Northern Territory and had gotten in the habit of going out with his wife along the river to fish where hundreds and thousands of crocodiles make their home. The incident occurred when the man waded into the water to unhitch a line that had gotten snagged. As he waded into the water, his wife was packing up the car. She then heard him scream, Oh my God, I'm dead! And by the time she turned around, the crocodile had already eaten him. This was one massive albino crocodile. It was killed after the incident and its giant skull was preserved and even brought into Darwin Court, where an inquest into the death was being carried out. Court records indicate that the albino crocodile was nearly 15 feet or four and a half meters in length. And according to coroner Greg Cavanaugh, there is a serious concern that crocodiles are eating more and more people, especially these giants that live in the Adelaide River. Number four, the Savannah King Croc. In 1957, a giant crocodile was captured and killed in Australia and the photograph of this massive beast has been seen around ever since. The caption claims that the crocodile was 28 feet or eight and a half meters in length. However, people have been doubting the authenticity of the photograph because that seems way too big, even for the most legendary of crocodiles. According to Snopes, the image is 100% real. However, the date of the photograph is wrong. And even though it looks so big in the picture, the crocodile was not actually 28 feet in length. The photograph was actually taken in 1914 on the shores of the Roper River in the Northern Territory of Australia. Absolutely nobody knows where the photograph came from, but we do know the name of the hunters were Miss Cross and Mr. Joint. Mr. Joint was apparently a reverend who did missionary work in Australia during the early 1900s and 
also hunted crocodiles. As for why this huge crocodile probably wasn't 28 feet, it's just not a thing that feels likely. There has never in the entire history of humankind been a recorded crocodile that large. The biggest crocodile ever recorded was only about 20 feet long, or 6 meters. To imagine a monster so much longer would simply be ridiculous. Still, this savannah king crocodile was probably quite terrifying and gigantic, and it's no surprise to think that the people who captured him got a little carried away when measuring. Number 3. The Swamp King Scientists have recently discovered proof that there was a very intimidating crocodile that lived about 5 million years ago in what is now Australia. Scientists have nicknamed this giant crocodile Swamp King, and they're saying that it probably preyed on ancient giant kangaroos. All of this information came about because of a skull that was unearthed in Australia back in the 1980s. However, it wasn't until recently that analysis was able to prove that the skull belonged to a brand new species and new genus. But here's where things get really interesting. According to the report in the Daily Mail, the average size of this prehistoric crocodile was only 16 feet, or 5 meters. That's not actually that large. However, scientists are saying that the crocodile had a very heavy skull, a whole lot of power, and looked exactly like the largest living saltwater crocodiles on Earth today, except hulked out on an extreme diet. The crocodile was named Paludrex Vincenti, after Jeff Vincenti, the fossil collector who initially found the huge skull about 200 miles or 300 kilometers northwest of the city of Brisbane. In Latin, Paludrex means Swamp King. Number 2. Gustav the Killer a killer crocodile was discovered in the second largest lake in Africa, and to this day he remains a nightmare in the minds of the locals. His name is Gustav, and each time he's spotted, somebody dies. Gustav lives in Lake Tanganyika, the longest saltwater lake in the entire world. It crosses the boundaries of Tanzania and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and even Tanzania and Zambia. This is a huge place. So it's no wonder that rough estimates have placed Gustav as being almost 20 feet in length, or 6 meters. Some sources claim that he has killed at least 300 people, but of course these have not been substantiated. Professionals estimate that he is anywhere between 60 and 100 years old, and despite countless attempts to murder this crocodile, he has always escaped unharmed. For example, he has been shot at least three times. He has also been blamed with the death of someone working at the Russian embassy who had been bathing in the nearby waters. A French hunter named Patrice Fay even tried tracking down and killing the crocodile in 2010, but he couldn't get his sights on him. Patrice even suggested to the BBC that Gustav is too smart and its survival instincts are too strong, suggesting that this enormous and murderous killer crocodile will probably never be caught. And guess what? It still has not been captured. Number 1. Sarcosuchus The Sarcosuchus is a distant relative of our living crocodilians, thriving between 122 and 112 million years ago. It was significantly larger than any current saltwater crocodile on Earth today. This literal beast was likely over 31 feet long, or 10 meters, and seriously dangerous. Its remains were first discovered by a French paleontologist in the Sahara Desert, including the skull, a bunch of teeth, and even some vertebrae. But a full skull was not found until 1964, and even then, it wasn't until 2012 that the anatomy of the Sarcosuchus became known to science. This was after an expedition of American paleontologists uncovered six new specimens in the desert. These creatures had telescoped eyes and very long snouts with 35 teeth in each side of the upper jaw. They would have looked like a mix between a standard saltwater crocodile and a gharial, only much larger than anything you could ever imagine. You should be happy that these are not the volatile reptiles skulking through backyards in Florida. Forget eating your pets, the Sarcosuchus would eat your car. What's the biggest crocodile you've ever seen? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and come back soon.